What decks would the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime characters like Yugi, Joey, and Kaiba use if they played the game today? I've seen lots of people make videos and discussions about this, and it's always been one of my favorite questions to think about because there are just so many different possibilities. Plenty of cards from the anime have gotten legacy support over the years, so those are easy picks, but what if we took things further? In this video, I want to explore what kind of decks these characters would play in the actual TCG today. So I've compiled a list of all the main characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters and match them with a modern deck that I feel matches both their playstyle and their personality. And probably a runner-up or two if it was a really hard one to decide. I'll justify my choices, but this is still totally subjective, so I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments too. I also tried to avoid giving them decks used by characters in other Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, which made things a little bit harder. So starting off, we've got Yugi Moto. No, not a Tim yet, we'll get to him later. One of the tricky things about Yugi is that it's hard to tell where his deck building tastes end and the pharaohs begin. That said, we still got some things to go off of. Yugi plays the Gadget Monsters and the Silent series, that's Silent Magician and Silent Swordsman, in his final duel against a Tim. He'd be happy to know that they're even getting their own retrained archetype in the game soon, but that's not exactly what we're here to focus on. We also know that Yugi himself seems to like games, riddles, and puzzles. He mentions in the Dark Side of Dimensions movie that he actually wants to be a game designer himself after high school too. And of course, Yugi values the bonds he has with his friends as a recurring theme throughout the entire anime. So, with all that in mind, I think Yugi's modern day deck would be... Adventure Tokens. The deck just feels like a perfect fit. It's heavily inspired by tabletop RPGs and isekai anime, with the adventure token itself being the stand-in for the player's character and all the different monsters representing their party members. So it definitely has that video game vibe, and it wouldn't surprise me if this was an actual game that Yugi would play in his free time, or maybe even design himself. The deck's strategy and playstyle also feel very Yugi-centric. The different monsters can all bring themselves out to the field as long as the protagonist is in play, and it utilizes equip spells, field spells, and trap cards, giving Yugi a wide variety of ways to approach any duel. That said, there were two runner-ups that came to mind too. I think the Valence archetype could also match Yugi's style pretty well, since it simulates a real-life board game with cards acting like pieces and moving around the board. I also considered Vanquish Soul, which emulates a fighting game with combos and team-based character switching. But ultimately though, I still just think that Adventure Token suits a literal protagonist character the best. Next up is Seto Kaiba. Kaiba's always a fan favorite, and he's most known for using the Blue Eyes White Dragon, so I'm sure he'd be happy to just use an updated Blue Eyes deck with all of its modern support like Bingo Machine and Jet Dragon, White Stone of the Ancients, and the updated Lord of D cards. But what if Kaiba wasn't playing Blue Eyes anymore? As hard as that is to imagine, there are still some potential decks that come to mind. Kaiba's personality is obviously super competitive. He believes in playing the strongest cards, the strongest strategies, and overwhelming his opponent with them. Kaiba also has a fascination with dragons in general, and the light attribute seems to be his favorite kind of monster. You can see that in his XYZ Dragon Cannon cards, for instance. One last thing I thought about with Kaiba is how much he really likes to debilitate his opponent, restricting their ability to play the game and depriving them of their best cards. So signature cards like Crush Card Virus, Virus Cannon, and Ring of Destruction kind of all come to mind here. Now, taking all of those things into account, what deck would Kaiba use today? Well, I actually came up with a few. Some variation on the Dragon Link deck seems like the most obvious choice here since we know Kaiba loves his dragon. You might be thinking that this kind of breaks our rule of avoiding archetypes that are used by other anime characters since Revolver from Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains does use the Rocket and Boral cards but personally, I think the Dragon Link deck differentiates itself by just using a combination of all the best dragon cards across the game right now, including Chaos Dragons, Bestials, and Dragoonity, just to name a few. But of course, there were plenty of runner-ups. Drytron seems like a decent fit, since they're light attribute monsters with a heavy dragon theming to them, and they ritual summon based on the monster's strength instead of its level, which feels like something Kaiba would approve of. The other potential pick was actually Kashtira. All of its base monsters have huge stats and are super easy to summon to the field, which definitely channels Kaiba's beatdown style. But more than that, their entire theme and effects all deprive the opponent of resources by banishing them face down from the hand, field, deck, and even extra deck. It definitely gives those crush card and virus cannon vibes. So what about Joey Wheeler? He's of course known for iconic cards like Red Eyes Black Dragon and Flame Swordsman, and he could easily use one of those decks today if he wanted to, since they've both got pretty solid strategies built around them. But again, what if he wanted to use a new deck? Well, we know Joey favors warrior-type monsters, and he's got a really passionate, fiery personality 
So the most obvious pick to me was Infernoble Knights. They're based on real historical knights, and they feel like spiritual successors to the Flame Swordsman, having not just the same attributes, but also utilizing equip spells, which kind of reminds me of one of Joey's favorite early anime cards, Salamandra. Deck's use of equip spells also channels a bit of Gearfreed the Iron Knight, another one of Joey's go-to monsters. It's pretty easy to imagine Joey's new ace monster combo being Infernoble Knight Emperor Charles, but with Immortal Phoenix Gearfreed being a solid backup too. And for the honorable mentions, I thought of two. Dragoonie seems like a strategy Joey might take too as well. His signature Baby Dragon and Thousand Dragon cards are both wind dragons, so something about Dragoonies felt like they were just a good fit. They're a combination of dragons and winged beasts, and since they still use themselves as equip cards, it somehow feels like a Joey sort of thing. A more fun left field pick of mine was actually Six Samurai. Again, you've got the warrior typing and a very very aggressive monster swarming strategy that fits Joey's impulsive personality really well. A little known fun fact is actually that the very first card ever shown in the anime is played by Joey and it's Kagamusha of the Blue Flame, a card that's connected to the Six Samurai. Next character is Maximilian Pegasus. He'd be absolutely ecstatic, I'm sure, to see how much fun new tune support exists in the game today. Even Relinquish has gotten some pretty decent support cards and a retrain over the years. But let's think of modern decks instead. We know Pegasus loves cartoons and toying with his opponents, so I think the obvious choice here is the Prank Kids deck. Their wacky art style just gives off the tune vibes really well, and the playstyle also fits here. The monsters quickly multiply in the field, and then they nickel and dime the opponent with burn effects and stat debuffs. But more importantly, the deck's boss monsters like Battle Butler and Rip Roar and Roaster, which really hard to say, have really sudden and destructive effects that can devastate the opponent, which kind of matches Pegasus's fun-loving exterior but more sinister interior. I do have a runner-up for him though, and that's the Amazement Archetype. It's another deck with a bit of a goofy aesthetic that turns iconic Yu-Gi-Oh monsters into circus attractions, which again feels like what Pegasus did with his tune cards and the deck has traps with different effects depending on whether they're used on his monsters or the opponent's monsters, which again goes well with Pegasus's kind of unpredictable playstyle. On a completely separate note though, I could totally see Pegasus just making a deck full of illusion monsters, since they've been formally introduced into the TCG now, and they've been getting support too. The Eye of Illusion card is literally based on his Millennium Eye and how he uses illusion monsters in his duel against Yugi in one of the earliest episodes of the anime, although those concepts weren't really very well explained at the time. Next up is My Valentine. She's unfortunately one of the very few consistent female duelists in the series, which is a bit of a shame, but I did have a lot of fun thinking of a new deck for her. So obviously Harpies and Amazonas both have some solid new cards that she could use if she wanted to, but when it comes to modern decks, she's a surprisingly tough case. When I think of Mai, two things come to mind her strength, and her sense of independence. Mai wouldn't just play any conventional girly deck, I think that she would want something that's also got a bit of bite to it too. So I'm actually torn between two decks here. My gut pick is Dragon Maid. They're a really strong archetype that switches between the weaker maid forms and then the more powerful dragon forms when they're ready to battle. To me, it sort of resembles Harpy Ladies and their Harpy's Pet Dragon relationship. The only wrench in the plan here is that I'm not sure Mai would want a deck that's associated with subservience like housemaids are, but I might just be reading too far into that. The runner up here though, and this one's a bit of a stretch, is actually Evil Twin. They've got two sides, the cute avatars and the more devious evil forms, but something about them definitely feels like the harpy ladies, and I think that they capture that beautiful but terrifying feel really well. This is definitely one of the ones where I'd love to hear what people pick for mine in the comments though, because she's a bit of a tough one. Moving on, we've got Weevil Underwood. You know, everyone's favorite Exodia tossing, parasite sneaking duelist. Don't worry, I don't think Modern Weevil will actually even have a reason to cheat anymore since there are actually a handful of pretty good insect decks to pick from. His own Insect Queen strategy has gotten a fair amount of support in the modern day and he definitely could still use it, but Weevil's more obvious pick to me would have to be Bee Troopers. They're a purely insect based strategy that combines field swarming with a bit of control, recursion, and some very powerful boss monsters. I can already imagine Weevil would love crushing his opponent under the might of Bee Trooper Invincible Atlas or Absolute Hercules. And a second runner up deck would be the Insector strategy. They're a bit older now and not as strong as Bee Troopers, but I can still totally see Weevil making liberal use of cards like Insector Hornet and Dragonfly to pick apart the opponent's field. I should also probably mention some of the loose insect support from recent packs too. Cards like Dragon Bite just look and feel like Weevil's kind of thing, and Beargrim, the shelled Emperor of the Forest Crown, is another boss monster that Weevil could just overwhelm his opponents with. 
And we can't talk about Weevil without his partner in a low-level antagonistic crime, Rex Raptor. He's famously known as a dinosaur duelist, but his ace monster, the two-headed King Rex, has only gotten two retrains, but not really a full deck in terms of support. So, since he doesn't have enough to really make a full deck with, it's fun because we get to look a little bit further. Ultimate Conductor Tyranno definitely came to mind at first, but we actually can't use that since the Tyranno monsters are used by Tyranno Hassleberry and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Now then, what do? Well, We've got two more options. Dynamorphia could be a good fit, but I think that their playstyle doesn't really suit Rex's personality. I think Rex would prefer to overwhelm his opponents with raw strength rather than kind of playing it on the edge with Dynamorphia's high risk, low life point strategy. Plus, the dinosaurs that are in Dynamorphia aren't actual dinosaurs, they're really mechs and agents, so he probably wouldn't approve. Instead, I think Rex would absolutely love the Transcendosaurus archetype. They're huge monsters, and they're actually based on old vanilla dinosaur cards like Mega Zowler, which Rex actually used in the anime, and their absolutely enormous stats and destructive effects just kind of strike me as more of the way he would like to play the game. Moving on, let's talk about Bandit Keith. He's unfortunately one of the less developed characters in the series, but we do know that he loves his machine. In particular, the Barrel Dragon. It's at least gotten a retrain in the form of Desperado Barrel Dragon, uh, but other than that, Keith doesn't have a load of legacy material to work with. I can't be the only one who wouldn't like to see a dedicated Machine King deck in the modern day, but anyway, I consider decks like Gizmax, Infinitrax, and Orcus, so none of them really seem to gel with him very well. Thankfully, the solution is really simple. Machina. They've got the whole big scary machine aesthetic down and a load of support between their two different structure decks. There's not a lot else to say here besides the fact that Machina has a combination of Earth and Dark Machines, which is another mix that Keith used a lot in the anime. All right, what about Bakura? For this video, we're just gonna focus on Yami Bakura since he's really the only one that we ever see dueling anyway. Bakura used a lot of fiend monsters, most notably Dark Necrofear and the Destiny Board strategy. As per use, it's gotten a decent amount of support in recent years, but we're going to try to think outside of the box of what he would play today. Fiends in general have a few different archetypes to pick between. There's Burning Abyss, there's Unchained, there's Arch Fiends, but one deck in particular struck me as ideal for Bakura, and that deck is Evil Eye. It's an underrated strategy that involves equipping the Evil Eye of Selene to your Fiend monsters, usually Serzio, Watcher of the Evil Eye, or its upgraded Link monster forms. The Evil Eye provides protection and steadily powers up its host monster at the cost of the user's life points. So why this deck exactly? Well, I thought it evoked the more occult nature of Bakura's deck in the anime really well. And not only that, but the whole countdown aspect of the Evil Eye making an insurmountable monster kind of vaguely resembles the trickling fear of the Destiny board ticking away. A really good second place pick though was Labyrinth. Again, they're fiend monsters and they focus really heavily on trap cards, which kind of feels like the sort of unpredictable, scary strategy that Bakura would employ against his opponents. Plus, Lady of the Labyrinth sort of resembles Dark Necrofear if you squint really hard. Next up is Merrick. And like Bakura, we're just going to focus on Yami Merrick. You don't really get to see regular Merrick do much dueling either, which is kind of a disappointment. But anyway, the obvious pick for Merrick would probably be a Winged Dragon of Raw deck, which is totally possible today with all the new support. However, if we were to actually think about a different deck, he's a hard one. Merrick's deck has a hodgepodge of monsters that just kind of have these vaguely evil themes and mechanics. But the two consistent things I was able to nail down is that he likes the idea of torture and despair for his opponent, and in a very uh, recursive, repeated way. Think Lava Golem, Help a Wimmer, Nightmare Wheel. What deck fits the bill? Well, I considered a few. Gravekeepers fit his lineage, but outside of Necro Valley itself, I don't really think that this deck causes enough torture for his opponent. So here's the two that I'm torn between. Unchained seems right up his alley since it's kind of self-destructive and that fits Merrick's personality. The monsters are literally dark and even the name of the archetype sort of hints at Yami Merrick's unhinged dark side coming loose. The only problem I have with them is that Unchained don't actually put the opponent through very much suffering. Now they are able to link summon with their opponent's monsters, so that is something, but I think a a slightly better alternative was Fire King, which are pretty similar. They want to be destroyed by card effects, and their recursive effects have that same immortality vibe that you get with the Winged Dragon of Raw. And cards like Garunix and High Avatar Kirin cause destruction on your opponent's side of the field too, so I think it fits Merrick a little bit better. Basically, it's a bit of a toss-up between Unchained and Fire Kings for Merrick, so you can let me know which one you think is better. Bones is a character who doesn't get much time to shine in the anime, but based on the couple of duels that we do see him in, we know he's all about his zombie monsters. Thankfully, his deck choice is really simple. The modern day zombie world deck. That means literally the zombie world field spell, of course, and all of the modern retrains of zombie monsters that synergize with it. That's Doom King, Balor Drog, 
Glow Up Bloom, Necro Weld Banshee, the whole nine yards. That said, if I had to pick a more focused strategy for him, it would probably be Skull Servants. As they get sent to the graveyard, they'll increase the power of his King of the Skull Servants with some protection effects in the process. It's a bit of a gimmicky strategy, sure, but maybe that's more fitting for a one-note side character anyway. What about Esperoba, the psychic duelist? Well, since we're gonna basically skip over Jinzo, what deck would he play in the modern day? Well, the good news is that unlike when the anime was airing, psychic is a real type now, so we've got some options. Virtual World seemed like a pretty decent fit, but my main issue with them is they don't really feel like they've got much of a theme going on. They're based on mythological animals, sure, but I'm just not sure Esperoba Robo would really care for them. So the other option was the Punk deck. It's another deck of psychic monsters, and they kind of look a lot like Virtual World at a glance, but I think that the difference lies in the inspiration. Punks are based on different types of art and music, and you might remember that Esperoba's backstory in the anime is that he and his family were carnival folk, so I think it just fits a little bit better. Next up is a Shizu. So in the anime, she uses an Earth Fairy deck. Now, if you're a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player, then you already know about the terrorism Ishizu's retrained monsters in the modern game, a lot of them have ended up on the ban list, but let's assume that she wanted to play something different. I actually came up with a few options for her. Vernaself is a newer archetype of Earth Fairies that perfectly captures the type and attribute of her original deck, but I'm not so sure that they're really the right fit in terms of her character. A little too cute and not enough mystique. So the second idea that I had was Exo Sisters. We've got a nice mix of being thematically and strategically Ishizu-like exercising spirits like how she hoped to defeat the evil presence in her brother and locking the opponent out from the graveyard which is a lot like what you'd expect from the gravekeeper deck for instance they're probably the best overall pick for her but my third option is a pretty spicy one it's horus the new horus the black flame deity king sarcophagus and the four servants who continually revive themselves from the graveyard horus is an important deity in egyptian mythology so this one seemed like a match made in heaven i'll leave it up to you guys to decide which one you think works best for her since we did a shizu we'll give odion a deck too why not Originally, he used a trap monster deck with cards like Embodiment of Apophis, so I've got the perfect modern equivalent, the Eldritch deck. Got a combination of trap monsters and the Golden Land cards, plus the Eldlixer cards to summon out his new boss monster, Eldritch the Golden Lord, which kind of feels like an honorary equivalent to the Mystical Beast of Circuit from the anime. The deck really captures that frustrating, recursive strategy that he used against Joey in the anime too. And sure, why not? Let's include Arcana too. His deck was mostly centered on his own copy of Dark Magician, so I could literally see him being the type of player to just use a completely dedicated Dark Magician deck, maybe even more so than Yugi. But if I had to give him something new, I think he would use a completely spellcaster-centric deck in the form of Endymion. You know, utilizing spell counters for removal and protection and disruption, and loudly exclaiming the name of his new favorite boss monster, Endymion, the Mighty Master of Magic. Granted, I did consider a few alternatives. Arcana is clearly a theater kid, so Abyss Actors kind of came up, but they're already used by Silvio and Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Alternatively, there's Despia. They're not spellcasters, but the entire archetype is based on parts in a play. Theater of the Branded, Alibur the Jester, Dramaturge, Ad Libidum, Masquerade. So maybe that's the better pick for him. We're here now, so let's get the Paradox Brothers out of the way too. Gate Guardian just got loads of support that they would be absolutely thrilled to see, but the alternative pick, in a modern sense, is pretty obvious. Valen. I was thinking about it for Yugi, but changing the field into a game board just suits these guys way better. They even make use of two different field spells since there's two duelists, and I can totally see the Paradox Brothers being some of the only OG characters who would fully embrace Pendulum Summoning since it's so foreign and confusing. Now imagine how crazy this would get in a tag duel, jeez. To be fair, I did consider Mech Knights too since they're kind of about zone hopping, but I just feel like the labyrinth parallels with Valence were too strong to pass up here. Screw it, we'll even include Solomon Moto, Yugi's grandpa. He's basically the only duelist in the anime to have a full legal set of Exodia cards that he eventually gave to Yugi, and we know that Exodia is actually getting an entire archetype of cards soon in the modern TCG. But if not that, then what else might he use? Well, when Grandpa enters the Kaiba Cup Grand Prix, he plays an anime-only archetype of rock monsters called the Agents. These literally don't exist, but going off of that, I'd say he'd want to use a rock-based deck in the modern day too. Fossils are already taken by Jim Crocodile Cook from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, but thankfully there's another, much stronger alternative for him. 
the Adamancipators. The base monsters are cave explorers that excavate the deck in search of other rock monsters, which calls back to Grandpa Moto's days of exploring tomes in ancient Egypt. The only thing is that this deck is very combo intensive, so I could actually see Grandpa Moto using a slower thing like Kawaki Meru Stun instead. It's still rock based, but the slower pace and kind of more defensive style with Kawaki Meru Wall, Sandman, Guardian, and Overload just disrupting the opponent and being big bodies feels like it suits him better. And finally, we end at Pharaoh Atem himself. Unsurprisingly, he was one of the hardest characters to decide on a deck for. It's gotta be something strong, obviously. It has to really feel like a flexible deck with a mixture of themes and play styles. And most importantly, it has to feel like something that a king with great and terrible power would use. Of course, almost all the different monsters that Atem uses throughout the anime have gotten support in some form or another. And some of them even got entire like exclusive archetypes and playstyles. Blackluster Soldier, Buster Blader, Gaia the Dragon Champion, the Face Knights, the Magnet Warriors, and of course Dark Magician. But as for something new, what deck would Yami Yugi play at a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament today? After much deliberation, I think I've got the perfect answer. Drum roll, please. Branded. Yes, you heard that right. Yami Yugi and Branded feel like a match made in heaven. Potent spellcaster monsters? Check. Powerful dragons? Check. A heavy emphasis on fusion summoning? Check. And a combination of light and dark attributes? Check. It really does feel like this is the strategy for him. Branded can function as a fast-paced combo deck, a mid-range deck, and even a slower control deck. And it combines a bunch of different pieces from a lot of disparate archetypes as well, it can make comebacks at a moment's notice, and it even does evoke that powerful aura of ancient and dangerous magic. Branded itself has really defined competitive Yu-Gi-Oh over the last several years, and I just can't think of a better deck to be used by the Pharaoh himself. So that's it. Those are the decks that I think every major character from the original Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters anime would use if they played the game today. What'd you think of my picks? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Pass turn.